Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to start a new topic, which is on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to show it to you how can we actually represent a transmission line using lump elements such as resistor, inductor, and also capacitor. So this will be the objective for this video. This will be the part one series discussion on transmission line theory. If you're keen to know more about transmission line, please take a look on the playlist under the description. I'm going to put more video on this discussion soon. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start okay, by quickly understand the key difference between transmission line theory and circuit theory. Between these two, the key difference will be the electrical signs. Give a guess which one will have a longer electrical size or longer wavelength. Which one will have a longer wavelength? Okay, so this circuit theory will have the longer wavelength. And transmission line basically has a very little wavelength because of high frequency, which we are going to understand better. Transmission line may be considered a fraction of a wavelength or many wavelengths in size. Okay, so in short, this sentence means that for transmission line, okay, the wavelength can be equal to the length of the transmission line or many, many wavelengths is equal to the length of the transmission line. Let's take a look on the diagram in order to understand better. This is a transmission line, for example. Okay, so this is a wavelength. So this is one wavelength. This is another wavelength. So from here, you can see that the transmission line is actually made up of many, many wavelengths. Okay. 1, 2, and then 3, 4, etc. So basically from here, I conclude that this is a transmission line because this transmission line is basically has the length of many, many wavelengths as defined over here. Okay. Or the transmission line is almost equal to one wavelength. So this is the definition for transmission line. So in short, okay, the transmission line typically will be much, much, much longer as compared the wavelength. So this is the definition. Next, let's move on to circuit analysis. Okay, for circuit analysis, typically when we talk about this, we actually mean DC. Okay, DC simply also means very low frequency. So from here, you can see that this is basically a wavelength of low frequency. Okay, for this case here, we imagine the physical dimension of the network are much smaller than the electrical wavelength. As a frequency reduce okay, the wavelength increase. So this is the wavelength and this is actually what we meant earlier on. Okay, so instead of a uh, transmission line, now we cannot call transmission line anymore. Typically we will call this as a cable. So for this cable, they are much shorter as compared to the wavelength. And therefore under this classification, okay, we can do DC analysis. We can use lump element R LC to represent an equivalent circuit. But for transmission line, we can't. Okay, so I will explain a little bit further why we can't use lump element to really represent transmission line. Okay, but definitely we can do a little tweak so that we can use this lump element to represent the transmission line, which I'm going to go through soon. Transmission line is a distributed parameter network. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, why this is called a distributed parameter network. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, over here, because you can see that this is the wavelength, there is a fluctuation between maximum and minimum. Okay, so you realize that there is, there is maximum and also minimum. And in short, basically, they will be classified under this distributed network. Okay, so with this, you can also aware that the voltage and also current they actually varies in magnitudes and phase over its length. So which means that 
at all the point of any point of the length of the transmission line, the voltage and current can be very different, either in terms of magnitude or in terms of phase. So this is the definition because transmission line is a distribution distributed line. While circuit analysis deal with lump element where voltage and current do not vary over the physical dimension of the element. So when we talk about DC analysis, for example, this is a cable. Let's imagine now this is a cable. We don't talk about any changes of voltage and current, right? So basically, whatever voltage that we supply here, we assume that the current is even throughout, be it the magnitude or be it the phase, they are the same. So this is basically for DC analysis. Okay, because the wavelength, okay, is so so cost so much longer as for compare against the wavelength so therefore there won't be any difference between the any point of this transmission line under the circuit theory analysis a transmission line is often schematically represent as a two wire line since transmission line always have at least two conductor okay so this is actually to use to represent transmission line there are two conductors, so typically we will use this to represent a transmission line. Next, okay, so earlier on I told you that transmission line, okay, because of their short wavelength, we cannot represent lump element, correct, if you still remember. So what can we do? Can you imagine this is a transmission line? Okay, we can cut them into smaller pieces. When we cut them into smaller pieces, then, okay, this length can be comparable to the wavelength because we cut the transmission length into small pieces and therefore the length of the transmission line also reduced and we cut it in a way that is actually comparable to the wavelength or maybe even so-called uh, longer than many many times of the wavelength so basically this this is what we are, can do we can just cut the transmission line into smaller pieces okay so therefore this part here won't have significant impact on the voltage and also the current, which means that since we cut this into a smaller piece, we can assume that the voltage and current, they typically will be almost the same. Okay, because remember, for this length, they can be longer than the wavelength. And therefore, because of this, then the end result may not be significant, which means that the voltage and current will not varies the line of the length z can be modeled as a lump element with r l g and c as per unit length quantities okay so this is basically the equivalent schematic to represent the transmission line at a very short session of the length okay remember this is change in z i just want to represent at a very short distance okay uh, of the transmission line and you can represent by this equivalent transmission line circuit theory, which I'm going to further explain on the next video. But at this video, okay, let's just conclude that this will be the schematic to represent the transmission line. The lump element will be the R, okay, the L, the G, and also the C. Basically, from here, you can see that the current actually differs. Okay, I can also see that the voltage will be different because there will be a voltage drop in between this portion here so all the r l and g and c so basically these are all mentioned over here let's take a look on the next slide in order to understand what is r l g and c okay the series l okay so basically this is a series l they represent the total self inductance of the two conductor and the shan c is due to the close proximity of the two conductor you see, it's because these two conductors are too close together. So you know that when they are too close together, they have this effect of the capacitor. The series R represents the resistance due to the finite conductivity of the individual conductor. Okay, the R is because uh, even for a perfect uh, wire, you definitely still have some loss. So this R is to represent the loss of the wire. And the shunt conductor G is due to dielectric loss in the material between the conductors. Okay, so with this, I think you have a better idea. How can we represent the transmission line using lump element? The key thing that I want to emphasize is 
we can use this is because we cut the transmission line into a smaller piece. When we cut the transmission line into a smaller piece, okay, for example, for this part, okay, this, the length, okay, will be comparable to the wavelength or it can be even longer as compared to the wavelength or many, many wavelengths can be represented by this length of the transmission line. So this is the tweak. We just cut a very small portion of the transmission line and therefore we can represent them as lump element. Remember, lump element only possible majority on DC analysis. But for this case here, we tweak it by cutting the length of the transmission line in order to use lump element to represent them. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys. Bye for now.